In the last video, we discussed the design of a flip-flop. So this time, let's go ahead and slightly improvise our design. Okay, so I'm still going to design a flip-flop, but this flip-flop has uh, more features. Okay, so let me draw a flip-flop. This is our flip-flop. As usual, we have the clock and we have the D input and we have our Q output. Now in addition to these signals, let me add one more signal and let's call it a reset signal, R signal. Okay. And most flip flops, uh, they practically have this input called a reset. So what happens is if R is one, I'm using active high reset, Q will be zero, else that means if R is zero, Q will be D. This is the condition I want to implement. So this is a flip-flop with uh, reset. So let's call it D flip-flop with reset, something like that, D F F R. Okay. So let's see how can we design this. So let me uh, go back to our code. So let me just rename it. DFFR. You can write it in a, a different source file. So clock BQ, everything remains same. In addition to that, I have one more input, input R, our reset. Now whether to put wire there or not, up to you. But maybe I'll put wire there. What is our condition? Uh, previously it was simply every positive edge, D should go to Q. Now thing has changed. On every positive edge of the clock, if okay, here comes our new guy, the if condition. So you can again see it is a keyword in Vidlog also. So like your C code, uh, you will write if R is one. So proper way of writing one tick B one. What should happen to our Q? Q should be one tick B zero. Else that means. There is no reset r equal to zero q will get the value of d okay so this models our d flip flop with a reset so we have seen a new thing we have seen e else condition also in video so it looks similar to uh, c but here this e else uh, under this always block it is actually modeling a d flip flop with reset let's keep simulate it and see whether it is working fine so let me recompile, we log, my file name is still dflipflop, okay, okay, work.dffr is the module name, dffr is the module name, okay, so let me add wave, I have my clock, Okay, let's again keep 10 nanosecond as we did. Let me make D as 0 at the beginning, uh, R also 0 at the beginning. Let's keep it 0 and let's run 10 nanosecond here also. Okay, so everything looks same as before. Let me make D1 on this clock edge. On the next clock edge, Q became 1. Okay, so at this point, let me make R as 1. R is 1. Now, as soon as I make R1 on the next clock edge, Q became low because of this condition. If R is 1, Q is 0. Otherwise, Q is D. So now, as long as R is high, no matter what is coming in D, the output will remain low. Okay, my D is still 1 but it has no effect on the output. It is low uh, as long as the R is high. Now, if I remove R, the reset, so I removed R on this clock edge, but again, remember on the clock edge, R is still one. That's why the output is still low. On the next stretch, he will detect R is low, so Q will get the value of T. So Q became high. Okay, so as mentioned before. Now, a few interesting things to note here. Look at the sensitivity list. So here I have written this, this circuit, this always block is sensitive to the positive edge of the clock. 
that means the output is supposed to change only when there is a positive edge of the clock in between the output should not change so let me run maybe like 5 nanosecond here okay so we are like at this point falling edge of the clock let me change r at this point force r here and let's run so r change here but output is still high but on the next positive edge the output became low this is happening again because in the sensitivity test you wrote post edge clock that means your circuit its output will change only during the positive edge of the clock it doesn't matter when you apply the reset okay so in in practical case also when you make this flip flop and you connect this reset to some physical button or something so we will have some uh, button here and using this button you will be connecting it to high or low so vcc ground and you will be connecting it either between vcc or ground with the help of this button now it doesn't matter when you are connecting it the output will become low only on the next course of post edge so such reset we are going to call it synchronous reset okay so this flip-flop has synchronous reset uh, because the reset gets supplied only on the clock edge now that edge can be positive edge or negative edge that you can uh, control in your code of course now suppose you want a circuit where it is asynchronous reset okay asynchronous reset that means your clock is here and at some point say d was high something like this okay so this is our clock this is our d so q was also high at this point and it was like this and you have this reset signal and you pressed reset somewhere here so what you need is you want the output q to become low as soon as you press the reset you don't want to wait till the clock edge so such reset we call them as asynchronous so the term synchronous uh, usually denotes uh, something is happening with the clock signal synchronous with the clock signal asynchronous means it is not depending on the clock signal as soon as you give the signal the output should happen so i apply reset here i don't want the next clock edge the q should become low here itself so i, I gave reset something like this so q became low here and this clock edge it doesn't matter because reset is high q should remain low on this clock edge okay reset is low because of that q will have the value of d is already low so it will look something like that so now to implement this circuit you will have to change the very low code so as of now uh, if you look at the sensitivity list you will see our circuit it is sensitive only to the positive edge of the clock only when positive edge of the clock comes the output is changing now what you actually need uh, you need the circuit output to change whenever reset goes from low to high also okay so that also we need to add so we will write it like this always at positive edge of the clock or post edge r okay or is also a keyword you can see here so whenever there is a edge transition in clock positive edge transition or a positive edge transition in reset the circuit output will change okay so if any of this happens first this is the first condition if reset is high output is low if reset is low else means r equal to equal to zero uh, q will get the value of d okay. so let me modify it and let's recompile and rerun okay reload and we can restart let's force clock again 10 nanosecond i'm putting 10 nanosecond okay d and r let's make them zero okay 
so it's same as before right so now let me make d as high so i made d high on the next edge you can see q became high now here i'm going to make r as high and see where i am i am at a falling edge of the clock okay i'm going to change it here so i'm making r one here and let's look at the output you will see as soon as r became high my q became low because here it is written your code uh, here it is written your circuit is sensitive to the positive edge of the reset also so this condition should be evaluated if either this happens or this happens again when i say like condition should be evaluated again don't think like in software term like first he will check whether this changed then he will check this one then he will check this no when you write the code like this the EDA tool the implementation tool he automatically infers a flip-flop like this okay so he will understand uh, by that coding style this is what you want to implement okay so as long as r is high nothing will happen so let's make r low so r became low but output is still low why because we are not sensitive to the falling edge of reset we are sensitive only to the rising edge of reset and rising edge of the clock so here there is no rising clock edge no falling reset the next change is coming here here is the rising clock edge there q got the value of d okay so i guess uh, this is clear to you